The member for Denison has the call. Speaker, my question is to the Prime Minister. Prime Minister, the NDIS is obviously a great reform, but just as obviously too many people trying to access the scheme are hitting a bureaucratic brick wall. For example, there's the long wait to get an NDIS planner, problems staying in touch with the planner once you get one, and difficulties understanding the finished plan. Moreover, reasonable requests are too often denied, and it's especially telling that the NDIA is spending $10 million a year on legal battles to try and stop people getting funding, fights it's often losing. Prime Minister, what will you do to fix the NDIS? The Prime Minister Mr Speaker, I thank the honourable member for his question. Uh, the government is absolutely committed to the NDIS. It is uh, one of the most important social and economic reforms in our nation's history. Uh, it is changing lives and changing lives for the better. On Friday, I was with the member for Robertson, where we met, uh, where in that electorate around 2,900 people are expected to benefit from the NDIS, and we were delighted to see together the first hand with the New South Wales Premier the work of participants at Fairhaven and Point Clare. And we met with Alexander Koppelman and the team at the Options Theatre, really inspiring people. Uh, and they are benefiting from the NDIS. Now, they represent some of the 162,000 Australians who are now accessing the NDIS, where a majority of people are receiving more support and obviously have greater choice and control. 84 per cent of participants who entered the NDIS in the March quarter rated their experience as good or very good, and today the NDIS has released its quarterly report that shows that 44,945 people who had not been getting services from any government are now receiving support from the NDIS. Now, these are people who have significant and permanent disability but were left without any assistance in the community. Now, to demonstrate our commitment to the NDIS, we've sought to guarantee this essential service and give people certainty and the certainty that it will be funded now into the future, as the Treasurer outlined in the budget and certainty through the landmark bilateral agreement with New South Wales, which I signed with the Premier last week, that will deliver long-term funding and support for the NDIS in that state. Now, the level of support provided in a participant's plan is based on what's determined reasonable and necessary under the Act. Uh, and as of December 31, 2017, the total number of AAT appeals represented just 0.3% of all access decisions. As a nation, funding Prime will Minister, increase. Just to resume his seat for a second, the member for Denison on a point of order. Speaker, on relevance, the question goes to the difficulties being experienced by some people, not the great uh, experience that others are having. The Prime Minister has the call. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, as a nation, funding will increase from around $8 billion a year to around $22 billion when it's fully rolled out. The NDIA, in response to feedback from participants and providers that their experience was not meeting the high standards expected, undertook the Pathways Review. And in response to that review, the agency has been developing and trialling a new model, which includes more face-to-face -face planning to ensure people are listened to and, as a result, receive better quality plans and a more consistent point of contact, as well as clearer communication to participants. So the authority and the government are committed to ensuring that the NDIS is rolled out and that people get the support and service that they're entitled to. And I thank the honourable member for his question.